The intent of this video is to review the effectiveness of German submarine radar countermeasures and radar search receivers. This is a part 10 video of the channel series Bombers vs. Submarines Battle of the Atlantic series. As discussed in previous videos, Allied aircraft were fitted with various sensors to detect U-boats operating on the surface and also below the surface. In clear weather, the most accurate sensor to find a surfaced U-boat is utilizing the crew's Mark 1 eyeball and binoculars. If conditions prevent optimal visual scanning, then sea scanning radar can be adopted to find surfaced U-boats. The effective radar search range is about 8 to 22 nautical miles based on the radar type and conditions, as shown in this table from the declassified January 1945 United States Fleet Anti-Submarine and Escort of Convoy Instructions. All of the images shown in this video are declassified. If a U-boat can detect the presence of aircraft radar signals, it may be able to submerge prior to the aircraft attacking. As discussed in the channel's Part 8 video, after 15 seconds of submergence, the likelihood of a successful attack with depth bombs is nil. The German U-boats deployed various radar countermeasure decoys and radar search receivers throughout the war. German U-boats did eventually deploy their own aircraft warning radar, but it was not widely used and its success was insignificant, as discussed in this 1946 Chief of the Naval Operations document titled Anti-Submarine Warfare in World War II. It was not considered successful due to the radar's low power, short range, and fear of discovery by Allied search receivers. German submarine commanders feared the Allies could pinpoint the location of the U-boat if they turned the radar on, so they were mostly not used. All of these points are reinforced in this page from an April 1944 Chief of the Naval Operations titled German and Japanese Submarines and Their Equipment. German U-boat radar is ineffective. Submarine commanders were fearful that Allied radar detectors would home in on the U-boat's radar emissions. This image shows the installation of radar on U-190. The Germans adopted U-boat deployed radar decoys. As discussed in this section in the reference shown earlier, radar decoys would be used to draw the patrolling aircraft away from the U-boat. The U-boat would launch tethered fabric balloons with attached metal strips, much like chaff. These decoys were codenamed Aphrodite. These were also called radar decoy balloons, or RDB, as shown in this image. The decoy would present a false target to the aircraft radar operator. The hydrogen-filled balloons would be attached to a floating sea anchor with 100 feet of gut line. Aluminum strips are attached to the balloons, which give the appearance of a submarine to a radar operator. The decoy will stay effective for two to eight hours. 90 balloons were stowed in the U-boat's deck containers. An image of the deployed radar decoy balloons are shown in this sketch. This image shows the hydrogen bottles and a deployed balloon. This radar decoy was brought to Hitler's attention during the May 31, 1943 conference with Admiral Dönitz and various other high-ranking German officials, as discussed in this translated Führer conferences on matters dealing with the German Navy in 1943. The Navy describes the balloon radar decoy Aphrodite project, which will mislead Allied aircraft radar operators. Adolf Hitler approves the usage in June of 1943. The Navy also laments the struggles in adopting its own radar to U-boats. U-boats also deployed radar decoys consisting of arrays of resonant dipoles on a floating spar buoy. This decoy was codenamed Thetis. This decoy consisted of a pole with nine attached 16-inch metal strips. The exposed pole is about four meters in length and assembly took about four minutes. A U-boat can leave a trail of these decoys, which would remain afloat for a considerable duration. The Thetis project was approved for deployment by Adolf Hitler on January 13, 1944, as shown on this page from the Fuhrer Conferences on Matters Dealing with the German Navy, 1944. In sufficient numbers, these decoys would waste search resources. Neither of these decoys were considered successful as they were too small to be detected. A good radar operator could also detect that they were stationary. The feasibility of jamming Allied aircraft radar was discussed in the reference shown earlier. Difficulties of U-boat deployed radar jamming include 
the range of the jammer would be limited. The jammer would need to automatically adjust to the radar's wavelength. The aircraft radar could simply change its wavelength. A radar jamming system is under development, but not yet available. The most practical approach to countermeasure aircraft radar is to incorporate a radar search receiver. When an aircraft radar emission is received, the U-boat can dive and remain hidden. The U-boat's radar receiver should outdistance the plane's radar range for this tactic to be viable. This is not always the case, though. These points were discussed with Hitler during the May 1943 Navy meeting minutes. The Navy desired a radar detection set which would show the enemy plane's radar frequency and give ample time warning of an attack. This radar countermeasures did not exist. The Germans did not know the Allied plane's radar wavelength. The issue was German U-boat Metox radar detection sets were searching for radar in the 1.5 meter wavelength range. At this point, the Allies were adopting 10 centimeter wavelength radar. By the time this meeting was held in May of 1943, the Battle of the Atlantic was essentially over. Over 85% of the tonnage sunk by German U-boats occurred up to Black May 1943, as shown in this chart from the channel's part 2 video. The Germans initially outfitted their U-boats with the Medox radar detectors in July 1942. The Medox aerials are also called the Biscay Cross given their appearance. This image shows U-196 with its Medox radar Biscay Cross aerial. The Medox aerial is non-directional and needs to be stowed inside the U-boat when submerged. The aerial was manually operated and could pick up radar operating within the 125 to 250 centimeter wavelength. The METOX radar receivers could detect early aircraft deployed ASV-2 radar sets as discussed in this 1966 U.S. Army Chief of the Military History document titled Signal Corps, The Outcome. ASV is an acronym for Air to Surface Vessel. The ASV-2 radars operated within the METOX's receiving wavelength range at 150 centimeters. The Allies then adopted microwave radar operating well outside of the METOX's range. The SCR-517 or the ASV-3 radars operated in the 10 centimeter wavelength range or S-band. These units started operational service in February of 1943. The wavelength was too short for the METOX to detect the radar. It took quite a while for the Germans to develop suitable countermeasures for these new microwave radars. This image shows the installation of an SCR-517 microwave radar in a PB2Y aircraft. The Germans were baffled by the 10 centimeter wavelength radar. Not only did the new S-band radars render the METOX receivers useless, they provided greater detection ranges. This chart shows the interdiction date range of the S-band radar superimposed on the percentage of U-boats sighted in the Bay of Biscay. This chart outlines the number of U-boats sunk per month by aircraft. Part of the increase in U-boat sinkings is due to the introduction of the 10 centimeter wavelength radar and the submarine's inability to detect the plane's S-band radar emissions. One of the biggest blunders in World War II occurred at this time. The Germans assumed aircraft were locating U-boats by homing in on their METOX radiations. They removed their METOX receivers and replaced them with new Wang Z G1 radar receivers, which radiated much less power. However, most U-boat captains did not trust the new radars. These new radars operated in the 120 to 180 centimeter wavelength range and were not effective in detecting Allied S-band radar. It is interesting to read the meeting minutes between Admiral Dönitz and Hitler regarding the U-boat losses during this period. The German Navy is convinced in August of 1943 the reason for the U-boat losses is due to aircraft homing in on the METOX's radiations. This would explain the unsolved losses enemy avoiding traps, open sea losses, and fewer losses when the METOX receivers were turned off. Hitler listened to this explanation. He indicated that the METOX radiation theory does not account for other facts, like the enemy knowing the exact number of U-boats on patrol. To be clear, the Allies did not scan for METOX radiations. The Germans were unaware of the Allies' deployed S-band radar and that the Allies could read their naval coded messages. 
In September 1943, the German Navy finally realized the Allies were adopting S-band 10-centimeter wavelength radar. The German Air Force had captured a working 10-centimeter H-2S radar set back in March of 1943. This information took six months to reach the Kriegsmarine. Around another six months was needed to develop an operational 10-centimeter wavelength radar detector. Germany introduced a Nexos radar detector. Nexos operated in the 8 to 12 centimeter wavelength band. The range was short though. A POW estimated the system can detect aircraft radar emissions from a range of 8 to 10 miles. Improvements continued throughout the war though. Radar detection ranges matched the aircraft radar contact ranges. A drop in U-boat contacts were a result of this radar. This document lists that Nexus's radar detection range of 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles. Two units are carried. The aerial is manually rotated. A view of U-592 with the Nexos radar detector. Enclosed are various images of German U-boats with the Nexos mounted radar detection system aerials. The Germans provided the Japanese a Nexus model and plans, as discussed on this page from a June 1945 naval intelligence document titled German Technical Aid to Japan, a survey. Blockade runners carried various radar sets to Japan. An intercepted letter states that Japan received a Nexus. The full Nexus plans were received in February of 1944. The next video will cover U-boat stealth efforts and the snorkel effectiveness. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.